consent motion for the coronavirus bill. And our next speaker, speaker is Justin McNulty. Can I start by offering my condolences to the four families who have now lost loved ones to the coronavirus? I want to once again pay a tribute to our healthcare workers and wish them well in the enormous challenge they now face, and especially those who are literally getting a baptism of fire. I also want to pay a tribute to our key workers, including our healthcare teams, our pharmacists, our shopkeepers and retail workers, home care teams, refuse collectors, food producers, council workers, farmers, the media, who are playing a very important role in, in communicating the important messages that need communicated. Some workers are able to retreat to their homes, to their bunkers, and protect themselves from the invisible bombs that are trying to, trying to penetrate those bunkers. And it's so crucial that those, as many people as possible stay at home, but we must recognise that others do not have that luxury and are out there on the front line playing their part to defeat this virus. I also want to recognise the sports stars who have made important contributions over the last number of days, like likes of Michael Conlon or Rory Grugan, the RMAC captain, who are telling people strongly and firmly to stay at home. I empathise with families, employees, professionals, business owners, business people, the self-employed and the freelancers. There is so much uncertainty. And we need the certainty coming from here and from our ministers with robust responses to the queries that they raise. And there will be financial pain. But remember, priority number one is staying alive. In an ideal world, come Corla, we have weeks and months to scrutinise such a bill as this. That is not possible, as we are on the brink of an extraordinary crisis. The measures proposed are harsh but necessary. The coronavirus, COVID-19, is a global force majeure. I'm speaking now in my capacity as SDLP health spokesperson and as a member of the Education Committee and as an MLA for Nuri and Arma. I have some observations and comments in relation to the LCM that I'd like to put on record and also some concerns I want to raise on behalf of my constituents. I welcome the sunset clause or more properly referred to as an amendment for review as an amendment for review after six months. I want to once again raise the issue of personal protective equipment, especially for healthcare workers and for domiciliary care teams and for teachers, for shop assistants and retail workers, food producers. Can councils play their part in providing those? I welcome the testing numbers have gone up to 1,100 a day. And that's crucially important, especially for healthcare workers. We do not need our doctors, nurses, or consultants quarantined, quarantined for two weeks because of a head cold. In relation to this bill, disabled people have expressed their serious concerns. They believe this bill will effectively remove their rights to social care. And this could mean the difference between life and death for them. They need reassurance. They need contingency planning implemented immediately to put them at ease. Schools have been repurposed as child-minded facilities. And whilst everybody recognises we must play our part, we must play a role in defeating this coronavirus, they need more guidance and more, clear, more certainty around that, and they need that PPE I've mentioned. And we must recognise that our number one duty is to allow our frontline healthcare workers to provide the service that they provide. It's going to be so crucial in the weeks and months ahead. How will they have 24-7 capability of providing that facility if we don't have adequate childcare facilities for them? Students want to know, will they be 
liable for the next quarter's rent. It's crucially important that we educate, communicate, communicate, communicate at every opportunity. And what role does our public broadcasting service have in that regard? I welcome the emergency registra registration and re-registration measures to boost our health care and staff, nurf staff nurf sorry, healthcare and staff numbers. I want to wish our doctors, nurses, consultants, porters, cleaners, radiologists, admin and triage teams all the best of luck in the huge challenge you all now face in the weeks and months ahead. You are our bulwark and our spearhead. I know that all your force will move in one direction to defeat this virus. I challenge us all to innovate and think outside the box in our shared quest to defeat this common enemy, the coronavirus, COVID-19. I applaud the examples we've already seen on this island. GEA, Stadia, repurposing as drive through testing sites, Parky Keeve, Nolan Park, and our HQ at Crow Park. Can sports stadia up here be repurposed in the same manner? The repurposing of the O'Neill's factory in Straban, where staff who would otherwise have been laid off are now manufacturing scrubs for our healthcare teams. The owners of the Armagh City Hotel have offered their premises to help our Southern Trust if required. We have huge collective intelligence. What way can we think outside the box? What, what, how can we hack? How can our manufacturing capacity be hacked to produce makeshift ventilators if necessary? I applaud the members of this assembly for their efforts. I applaud our ministers. We are all under extraordinary pressure. Our healthcare workers and our frontline workers are under extraordinary pressure. That pressure is a privilege. I applaud our Minister for Health, who is under extraordinary pressure. But that pressure is a privilege. We all have a duty to play our part in defeating this virus. And I wish us all well in the challenges ahead. I call Matthew O'Toole. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I too um, would like.